Hello and welcome back to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Um, I'm, I'm Reza and just watched the most spectacular game by the Springboks <laughs> against Australia with the <laughs> uh, what landed up being an absolute driving 43-12. I'm joined here today with uh, Cull, our resident England fan, um, who is also uh, a part-time Springbok supporter, I think that's fair to say, um, mm. although we're slowly <laughs> converting him week by week, I think. Um, Cull. Overall Let's impressions. be honest, at this point, it's not a hard sell. <laughs> One win, <laughs> it's, not, it's, <laughs> it's not a hard sell. It's not a hard sell at all. So go on, go on, Carl. Tell us, what did you think of that? Um, well, actually, it was nice to see the Springboks not play their usual style. And even though they didn't u- play their usual style, they played really well, which I which I was quite surprised by. Um, I think it actually suits them quite well. Um it, it, it surprised me quite a lot that Esther Hazen kicked a few times um, and surprisingly worked most of the time. Um, yep. yeah, he's, 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 so. he's been, it's something that um, he's been working on um, for quite some time now. So uh, I'm, wonder I'm where. Not, I wonder uh, where. I wonder, I wonder where. <laughs> well, we'll credit the, the Europeans for something, I guess. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Carl, uh, let me ask you something. Um, with the Kirtley, Kirtley Arantz a hat trick. Um, so to speak, uh, it was almost four. Almost four, I think. Four, I think uh, um, yeah, I yeah, it was almost four. But Cal is is Kurt Lee in line for a starting position? Does he deserve one? Um, I mean, I know it's still early doors, but he's showing some serious promise. For me, I think yes, but it depends on who you're playing and what style the box really want to go for. Um, if they're going to play the way they did today, then yeah, he kind of has to start. Um, but then you have run into the problem of, can you do both him and Colby on the same team, on the wings, uh, against a team like New Zealand? It's, it, it's, it's one of those blessings of a headache to have. Um, and I certainly wouldn't be complaining if I was uh, <laughs> anyone around that area. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Say, Is this... Yes. Yeah. Uh, is this a, a warning a warning sign for Australia? Should they be concerned? Is this just early doors, a, a change of coach? You know, we can't really put too much on it. Um, but obviously in a World Cup year, it's quite concerning to to take such a drubbing, um, you know, a, a, against who are arguably going to be World Cup contenders in the box. Again, it's, it is early, but... As an England supporter watching Australia, all I could see was, oh my God, he's trying the Smith Farrell axis with Australia, with Cooper and Hodge. And while Hodge is definitely more of a centre than Farrell, it, it looked far too similar. Um, yeah. And I was just like, ah, you're going to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps maybe a lack of ingenuity there on the, on the part of Eddie Jones. Um, Stand up yeah. performer for you in this performance. See, when it, when people ask me stand up performers, I never go for people who I know, even they even if they did really well. So like I wouldn't choose our answer because I know he can do that. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't it, like that performance while it was amazing. It doesn't stand out because I know he can do it. He's done it before. Um, and for someone who's probably lost a bit of track of South African rugby recently, uh, Marco Van Staden was wild. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a great shot, Marco Van Staden. Although without the scrum cap for once, was a almost it looks like a different person. But um, a, a really really impressive performance for him, and you can just see that guys are really revved up and trying to earn their spot in that um, World Cup squad. Um, yeah. Lastly, some obviously some will always be controversial when you've got two penalty tries in a game and two yellow cards as a result. Obviously, the, yeah. the, the new the new laws don't allow separation of the two. So if you if you do um, have an infraction that causes a, um, a obviously a blockage of a try or potential mm. try, it's an automatic yellow card. But going back to there, any controversy for you around those decisions? Do you think they were warranted? <laughs> I think the only one that had that would really potentially have an argument against it is actually the rolling mall uh, sacking because he had a player behind him. He, there's no way he couldn't have fallen over. Yes, he could have let go, but then everyone would have just rolled over the top of him anyway. Would you naturally let go instinctually? Probably not. 
Yeah. So either way, it's still, by law, yes, penalty try and yellow card. But I don't see an alternative for him, really. I think there may have been a difference between um, intentional pulling back motion, which mm. he gave, as opposed to the you know the, the falling over motion. I think yeah. that the extra sort of whip that he gave, um, unfortunately, worked against him there, made it look very much like he was pulling the players down. Um, well, I was really, I was really happy with the refereeing. I thought the fact that he was he was very open to taking extra input from the TMO, um, absolutely from his touch judges. It was. It was really, it worked very smoothly and it stopped the whole stop start of everything, which was really absolutely, good. Yeah. And I think uh, big ups there to the team. I think it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and big kudos to, I hope that the, these official, officials see this video. Well done, guys. That was really, <laughs> that was really cool to see. Um, and to see that, I think it was who is better, Keith, um, yeah. taking on board, not criticism, but as you said, inputs well after he had already made his mind up. Um, on on certain aspects, but he but he did it within a reasonable time, you know. It's not as if play had carried yeah, on. Before the kick. Um, yeah. yeah, and so the TMO and the touch judges got involved almost immediately, um, which is great because often touch judges, especially, are reluctant to go against an on-field decision um, or to make their feelings heard. Um, and with a penalty try for Raleigh Mort in particular, um, are there any concerning? positions for Australia in terms of personnel? Um, do we think it is a personnel issue or do we think that this is um, perhaps a just, as we said, a game management style, new coach trying something different with the with a very talented group of players, in my opinion? Well, I think, the, the, and as much as, yes, Australia, you know, has talent for, to burn for, for a hell of a long time, but then so did England. Um, and... It, it does get to the point where it's like, okay, but are you just trying something that just doesn't work? And yeah. yes, I, I Eddie Jones has, has, if you look at like what he's done over his entire career, he's done some incredible like changes. Uh, he took the Brumbies from being absolutely trash to the best team in Super Rugby just by doing something differently. And I get what he's trying to do, but it's been shown it's not going to work. And if it does, it'll take a hell of a long time. And that's, that's a tough sell in international rugby. Yeah. Great to see. And obviously, we, we've got the New Zealand game um, as well, and we're going to see mm. how that goes coming up. Um, but question for you, right off the bat, first instinct, do the box win against uh, New Zealand next week? Uh, not, not first, like, prediction in my mind, but it also depends on the teams. Uh, I would say a lot of it actually hinges on how Damian McKenzie plays today. All right. Well, you heard it there first. And last thing, Carl, um, hot topic for the day and, and leading, up to, leading up to this, uh, Marnie Lebok, the worthy prince to the fly half throw? <laughs> look, I like him. I think he's – look, I don't think he's going to start at 10 if they're trying to play Pollard at 10, but Pollard at 12 is not a bad idea. They've been you know, shipping that for a couple of months now. Um, it seems that everyone's trying to put a proper fly half into the 12 position. Um, and if it, maybe the box shouldn't learn from that because it's not working. <laughs> um, but I, I think the box good, and I think a couple of games in, he'll be probably on par with Pollard, maybe not physicality wise, but skills wise, he got all of it. Absolutely. Uh, I think he, he showed a lot of BMT today. Uh, there were a couple mm -hmm. of hard moments, and he seemed to navigate them pretty well. Um, and overcame a couple of dodgy kicks to 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 yeah. really to to really put his stamp on the game. Uh, and he often wants to be the one who's showing the flair, but he also understands that in this team, um, he doesn't really need to do that. He needs to create the space for others to do exactly that. Mm -hmm. And he did it really well today. Um, but thank you very much, Carl. Thank you for your time today. Um, <laughs> let's hope that when England gets back to playing as well, that they can. Um, improve so to speak oh. on, on a couple of performances <laughs> and um we'll see you in the world cup yeah cheers well hope <laughs> buddy hope not but <laughs> 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 cheers mate cheers